Music has always been an important part of film. Even in the silent movie era, films were accompanied by simple live music and therefore never silent. With the entry of sound movie recording, the possibilities of integrating music in film became much more diverse, and with the release of The Jazz Singer in 1927, sound film was born. While many studios' opinions on the subjects were split, Walt Disney saw his opportunity to create something new and unique. The idea was to create a short animation with complete sound that was synchronized with the film's plot and the character's actions. After long experimentation, Walt Disney was able to record a soundtrack with an orchestra of 17 people, and in 1928, Steamboat Willie was ready to be revealed to the public. After the main character of the film and his world-famous mascot, Disney appropriately named his technique Mickey Mousing. The main function of Mickey Mousing is as a kinesthetic tool to underline the visuals. For example, look at this clip from the film Free for Breakfast from 1948. Feels pretty abstract, right? But now we watch the same thing with music underlining it. So Mickey Mousing was basically created to enhance the animated visual with the help of sound and music in synchronization with that visual to make it feel more alive. In 1929, the skeleton dance followed the success of Steamboat Willie and became the first animated film of the Silly Symphonies, a series of animated shorts which were released until 1939, which over time flipped this concept upside down. Slowly, the music became the main focus, and the picture accompanied it. The high point of this development was Fantasia in 1940. The music is the focal point and the star of the film, which is even stated within the film by addressing the music so, directly. I'm very happy to have this opportunity to introduce to you the soundtrack. All right, come on. That's all right. Don't be timid. Add a soundtrack. Now watching him, I discovered that every beautiful sound also creates an equally beautiful picture. Now look, will the soundtrack kindly produce a sound? Go on, don't be nervous. Go ahead, any sound. <laughs> well, that isn't quite what I had in mind. I uh, suppose we hear and see the harp. The effect of Mickey Mousing can be achieved through various ways. The technique that was mostly used at the beginning of Mickey Mousing was to first animate the film and subsequently record the sound to fit the image. A noticeable difference between this technique and other ways of Mickey Mousing is the submission of the sound to the picture. When this technique is used, it is most often noticeable to the viewer that certain movements of characters are tied to certain instruments and rhythms in the score. Other techniques of Mickey Mousing record the music prior to the picture or use a pre-existing piece of music and record or manipulate the image to fit that music. Franz Liszt's Hungarian Rhapsody No. 2 in C-sharp minor, for example, has been used in multiple Disney and Looney Tunes cartoons, and the previously mentioned Fantasia, where about two hours of film were animated to accompany already existing pieces of classical music, like Johann Sebastian Bach's Toccata und Fuge in D minor, or Ludwig van Beethoven's Pastorale, are the prime example of that. Even in live-action films, Mickey Mousing can be achieved to a certain extent. Films such as the 1935 picture The Informer contain scenes which were filmed with the music playing on set and the actors acting along to the score. 
Mickey Mousing can also be achieved through editing. In 1993's film version of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, the opening sequence is slowed down to match the score for comedic effect. But Mickey Mousing is still more often present in animation due to animation being more reliant on sound and music to reinforce the impact of the visuals to be more appealing. And because of that primary kinesthetic function of the music, live action movies are more often considered as cartoon-like when they use Mickey Mousing. This is where underscoring comes into play. Being the underlining of the visuals on screen, Underscoring is basically a washed down version of Mickey Mousing. And there can still be traces of it seen in modern productions, as seen, for example, in Sam Raimi's Spider Man. or in this scene from the Matrix Trilogy. There are still traces of Mickey Mousing in there, but it's far away from being complete synchronization. To find Mickey Mousing in more modern productions, you may have to leave the Western film industry and dig a little deeper. In episode 9 of the 1995 anime Neon Genesis Evangelion, titled Shunkan Kokoro Kazanete, Mickey Mousing is used in a more serious context. Here, the two main characters have to attack their enemy in complete synchronization to win the battle. This is achieved by a piece of classical music which was composed for the show, titled Both of You Dance Like You Want to Win, the English title of the episode. Another great example would be the 2013 video game Raymond Legends, where specific levels are constructed in such a way that the player has to make certain movements at the exact same time as certain instruments in the score play in the background. And the result is Mickey Mousing at its best. So that's Mickey Mousing, music synchronised to the visuals to bring the kinesthetic effect to the maximum. It's about the filmmaker using the tools that are available to enhance the picture and bring his vision to life.